All righty. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. So sorry for the slight delay. Um, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to view this webinar. My name is Jesse Bly. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Uh, take a second to jot down my information. It's just jesse at emergingdestinations.com. I'm happy to send you any sort of digital material that you might need. Um, I, would, I offer private webinars for you and your team. Um, if you need any help, uh, with your getting your customers on the phone, I'm happy to speak to them. So um, please you, utilize me for any sort of resource that you might need. Um, I am very happy to help. Uh, before I hand everything over to Enrique, who is going to be taking us through Iceland and Greenland, and a little bit about Iceland Pro Cruises and how you can cruise both countries, um, I just wanted to give you an idea of the emerging destinations portfolio. So not only do we have Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel in Iceland and Greenland, our po polar portfolio also consists of um, Adventure Canada. Um, we have a lot of cool companies on the continent of South America. So uh, we have the uh, Guyana Tourism Authority, Terra Nova in Costa Rica. We've got Hotel Las Torres and Fantastico Sur in Torres del Paine National Park. We've got Cruz Andino in the Lake District of Patagonia, Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon, and also Grand Hotels Lux in Argentina and Uruguay. So if you have any questions on our South America portfolio, please reach out. Lastly, we um, are on the continent of Africa. So Kelly and Peacock Safaris, the Elawana Collection, and Sky Safari by the Elawana Collection are all in East Africa and Kenya and Tanzania. We've got Eco Training in South Africa, and then Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda. So we're kind of all over the place. We're really proud to have such a uh, diverse portfolio. So. I would very much be happy to um, dive deeper into any of these clients if you'd wish. Also, you can head over to the Emerging Destinations uh, um, website. Underneath, underneath our webinar tab, we have tons of webinars that you can utilize and listen to on all of these clients. So um, please check out that webinar library and you can also sign up for future webinars. Uh, before I hand everything over to Enrique, um, I just wanted to let you know that this webinar will be recorded, so if you have joined late or if you need to leave early, you will be getting a webinar playback by the end of the week. Um, we encourage you to send that to anyone that you think might be interested in the destination, your team, um, whoever you'd like to send that to. Um, also, please type questions through on the GoToWebinar control panel, so you can just type through a question and I'll do my best to answer those throughout the webinar and maybe get to some of them at the end. But without further ado, um, I want you to get to know Iceland and Greenland with Enrique from Iceland Pro Cruises. All right, thank you, Jesse. So hi and welcome to this webinar on Iceland and Greenland. My name is Henrike and I'm working at the Iceland Pro Cruises sales office. Because we had to cancel our 2020 season, we thought you might enjoy learning about Iceland and Greenland and why it should be first on your client's list to travel when everything goes back to normal. Iceland is located in the Atlantic Ocean between North America and Europe. And uh, to be more specifically, it's uh, located between Greenland and Norway, just below the Arctic Circle. It's a small island with only 40,000 square miles, which is about the size of the state of Kentucky. Yet there is plenty of space for all inhabitants, as they are only 340,000, making it the most sparsely populated nation in Europe. They are in fact also the most eco-friendly country in the world because of the vast geothermal energy resources. Although the warm Gulf Stream has a positive effect on the climate, you have to be ready for all kinds of weather when traveling to Iceland. Temperatures in winter are around 23 to 41 degrees. Even though it can be very windy, it is not as cold as generally assumed. In summer, temperatures vary around 53 to 59 degrees, and they may rise up to 68 degrees. Rain showers are always possible, even though they do not last long. There is an Icelandic saying, if you don't like the weather, just wait for 30 minutes. The best travel season with the most pleasant temperatures and longer days is from May to September. 
the Highland roads are usually open from mid-June to mid-September. And the most colorful period of nature is from mid-August to early October. By that time, and if the nights are clear and cold, you might even be lucky to spot the first northern lights. But if you rather prefer winterly moments, you should travel between December and March. Reykjavik is the capital of Iceland and the world's northernmost capital. Nearly two-thirds of the country's population lives here. Granted, that's only around 123,000 people, but what Reykjavik lacks in terms of population, it makes up for in culture and excitement. It has a vibrant culture and design scene with plenty of exciting adventure tours, vivid nightlife, modern museums, world-class restaurants, galleries, shops, bars, and clubs to explore for your guests. Reykjavik is uh, surrounded by a lot of touristic hotspots, like for example, the Blue Lagoon. Mineral rich hot water from far beneath the earth forms the best spectacular lagoon, where a luxurious health spa has been developed in the rock lava landscape. The lagoon's geothermal seawater is known for its positive effects on the skin and it's a popular destination with tourists. Another highlight is the Golden Circle. It is an extremely popular route in the south of Iceland, featuring the magnificent Gullfoss waterfall, which you can see in the picture to the left, Thingvatlir National Park, and the Geysir Geothermal Field, which you can see to the right. It's the perfect day tour from Reykjavik to experience some of Iceland's natural wonders, and even for guests that only are in Iceland for a stopover, this is a, a perfect tour. Okay, let's take a short tour around the island. Iceland has only one main road that encircles the island. This is known as route number one or the ring road. We start in the west on the Snæfellsnes Peninsula. The area is often called Iceland and miniature because it boasts many different landscapes from dramatic fjords, snow-capped mountains and sandy beaches to fishing villages. The pearl of the Snæfellsnes Peninsula is the Snæfellsjökull Glacier. In the picture to the left, you can see the glittering glacial cap of Snæfellsjökull, which is located atop a crater which provided Jules Verne with the setting for his novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. To the right, you can see a couple of puffinbird. Iceland is in fact home to 60% of the world's Atlantic puffin population. Over 6 million individuals visit Iceland every year. Puffins roost on the surface of the ocean and only come on land in order to breed and raise it. This occurs throughout summer, therefore the puffin watching season in Iceland lasts from June to September. There are many great spots to do bird watching in West Iceland. Let's move on to the north, scratching the Arctic Circle. This region offers a huge spectrum of scenery to explore. On the picture you can see Detifoss. It's Europe's most powerful waterfall. One of the best known places in North Iceland is Lake Mývatn and its surrounding areas with attractions like Gutafoss, the waterfall of the gods, and the Mývatn nature bath. You can see Mývatn nature bath in the picture to the left. And you could call it the little brother of Blue Lagoon. And to be honest, it's a great alternative. I would rather send my guests here instead of Blue Lagoon if they are traveling around the island because the Blue Lagoon can be quite crowded. Another highlight of the north is a little town called Husavik. Nowhere else in the world do so many whales gather in one area as in the waters of northern Iceland. From Husavik, most of the whale watching tours start and in summer chances for whale sightings are at 99%. East Iceland is dominated by narrow fjords, rugged mountains, remote homesteads, and historic fishing villages. You can find a variety of hiking trails that lead through untouched nature and spectacular scenery. And as all over the country, you can meet the Icelandic horse. There are approximately 80,000 Icelandic horses in Iceland, and it is very, a very popular sport among Icelanders and a wonderful activities for families, beginners, and more advanced riders. 
Some of the best known sites of Iceland are located in the south, including the Jökulsárlón Glacier Lagoon. Huge blocks of ice constantly break off the glacier and float as large icebergs on the lagoon. The icebergs then float down the river and into the Atlantic Ocean, where some of them get washed ashore and sparkle on the black lava beach like diamonds. And you can see this in the picture to the left. Another highlight of the south are the numerous waterfalls. In the picture to the right, you can see Seljablandsfoss, one of the most popular stops when traveling along the south coast. Now we are taking a little tour into the highlands. The Icelandic highlands cover the majority of the country and many of Iceland's impressive natural attractions can be found here. Away from crowds, noise and the bustle of the ring road, the highlands offer silence and serenity. To travel through the highlands, you need a 4x4 vehicle and some experience with off-road driving. The roads and the hiking trails are open during the summer months and they are only mountain huts in this area, so no hotels, back and breakfast or other kinds of accommodation are available. To the right, you can see Lammanalaugur, one of the most popular areas in the highlands. It displays a number of unusual geological elements like multicolored rhyolite mountains and huge lava fields. Well, so how to get around in Iceland? Iceland's small scale makes getting around fairly straightforward, at least during the summer months. From Reykjavik, it's possible to fly or catch a bus to all major centers, and in summer, there are even scheduled buses through the highlands. In winter, however, reduced bus services and difficult road conditions make flying the only practical way to travel. It is also easy enough to rent cars, camper vans and four-wheel drives, and Iceland is the perfect road trip destination with a well-developed infrastructure and a good road system. Another way to get around is by ship. Iceland Pro Cruises offers 14 cruises around Iceland in 2021. All our cruises start and end in Reykjavik and we visit 10 harbors in 10 days, which means no days at sea. The ship usually docks directly at the pier from morning to evening, which gives your guests enough time to explore the surroundings on their own or to go on one of our optional shore excursions. Our aim is to bring the spirit of Iceland on board. Our expedition team members are mostly locals who sp speak, of course, English, and we have Icelandic food and entertainment on board. We call our product a soft expedition because it's a mix of a classical uh, cruise and an expedition cruise. The atmosphere on board is very casual and personal with only around 200 passengers per cruise. Let's have a look at our vessel. So the Ocean Diamond is quite an old lady, but a charming one. She was built in 1974 as a ferry and rebuilt into a cruise ship in 1986. The ship has recently been renovated and all cabins and public areas have been refurbished and modernized. On board, we have only outside cabins. Here you can see an example of an outside cabin category D. It's a cabin with a picture window and no obstruction. The size and the furnishing of all cabins on board is basically the same. They only differ in the location and the view. So we have portal, obstructed view and picture window. There is one exception though, and uh, this is our cabins in category A, which come with a private balcony. And as you can see in the picture, the weather in Iceland can be really nice and it gives guests a great private space to enjoy the sun and the scenery. The Ocean Diamond offers two restaurants, a library and a theater where we offer daily lectures on various topics and musical entertainment. In the picture, you can see the observation lounge. To me, this is the best place on board to enjoy the scenery when it's just too cold, windy or rainy outside. Our second destination we are going to visit today is Greenland. 
Greenland is the largest island in the world, and yet it has the lowest population density worldwide. 80% of the island is covered by ice, so it is sometimes hard to believe that you can still live on it. It's an autonomous country within the Kingdom of Denmark, and the national languages are Danish and Greenlandic. Approximately 88% of the population are Inuit. The climate in Greenland is Arctic. Even in summer, temperatures in the north often do not rise above 50 degrees. So be prepared for cold weather, even when the sun is shining. However, depending on the region, temperatures can also differ greatly. In the south, they may rise up to 68 degrees in summer. The air quality in Greenland is among the best in the world and the air is very dry. Because of this low humidity, the low temperatures do not feel as cold as you might expect. One of the best places in Greenland to see icebergs in all shapes and sizes is the Elulisat Ice Fjord. The UNESCO World Heritage Site is a massive collection of icebergs that have calved from a nearby glacier into a narrow fjord. Another highlight is, of course, Inuit culture. The Inuit culture in Greenland is very ancient. The people migrated from Alaska and northern Canada over a thousand years ago. Communities today continue to be built around family units and subsistence hunting. The modern culture is a fusion of traditional and new ways of life. Nuuk is the capital of Greenland and it's its oldest town. Founded in 1728, the city combines Inuit traditions and European urbanity. With around 16,000 inhabitants, Nuuk is considered a modern, bustling metropolis compared to the rest of Greenland, which is extremely rural. Despite the fact that the ice cap covers 80% of the island, Greenland has a diverse wildlife population on land, in the sea, and in the sky. Polar bears, musk oxen, whales, sea eagles, and reindeer are only a few of the common species here. So how to get around in Greenland? Well, there are not many options here as there is no road or railroad system. The only means of transportation are planes, helicopters, ships, and dog sledges in winter. Iceland Pro Cruises offers two cruises that combine Iceland and Greenland. Well, to be more exact, Iceland is only the starting or ending point of these journeys. The focus lays on Greenland. The 12-day cruise visits eight harbors and various sites along the east and west coast of Greenland. We bring experts and locals on board and offer a wide range of shore excursions to give our guests the opportunity to experience as much as Greenland as possible during the cruise. To wrap things up, I made a summary on the most important reasons why your guests should book with Iceland Pro Cruises. So the most important point, of course, is that we are the only Icelandic company that offers cruises around Iceland. With us, guests will experience Iceland with real Icelanders. With only 200 guests, the Ocean Diamond is a relatively small ship, which creates a homey feeling on board and allows us to cruise off the beaten path and to dock at the pier where other ships have to anchor. This gives your guests more time on land. The atmosphere on board is very casual and guests get easy in touch with the expedition team and tour guides and of course other travelers. Our concept, the soft expedition, is a cruise for everyone. Through booking the optional shore excursions, guests can shape their own cruise, either making it more adventure-like, like an expedition cruise, or more like a traditional cruise. We can also act as a DMC. We have our own office and staff in Iceland, and we can offer all kinds of extensions and extras to your guests. Here you can find my contact details in case you have any further questions or booking requests. So thank you so much for listening and we are looking forward to welcoming you and your guests in Iceland and on board the Ocean Diamond. And to end this webinar, please enjoy this short video about Iceland.
All righty. Um, so when we were running some tests earlier, we had difficulty playing um, the video. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually send that to you via email just because um, it's a beautiful video, um, just kind of highlighting the, the sights and sounds of Iceland. So um, don't worry, I will be sending that um, to you. Um, I want to take a few questions really quickly. Um, a lot of you had typed through some really great questions. So if you have a moment to stick around, um, I want to get to a few of those. Um, a few of you were commenting on the sound. I'm so sorry. I did have someone um, on the other line with me confirming that the sound was coming through clearly. So if any of you had trouble with your sound, please don't worry. I am sending a recording. Uh, my apologies for your inconvenience with the sound, but I did record the webinar and you'll be getting a um, a playback. So I just want to get to some questions. Um, I wanted to start with this really great one. Um, where do you sleep in the Highlands? So as Enrique mentioned, the Highlands take up most of the um, island. And although it's not too... Um, trafficked, I really do think it's one of the most beautiful parts of Iceland. Um, unfortunately, there are not uh, any hotels or anything in the Highlands, so it is camping. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to at least do some sort of excursion, adventure, or hike in the Highlands, definitely worth it. You can actually cut the country in half um, or uh, do a drive through the Highlands uh, for those adventurous people so you can still get um, you can get some of a taste of the Highlands. So that's a really great question. Um, a lot of you are interested in the pronunciation of a lot of the uh, cities and places, um, um, highlights that Enrique was mentioning. We have a really great blog that I'll send you where we have um, Enrique pronouncing the uh, main tourist attractions in the cities and ports uh, along with the pronunciation. Um, so you can hear and listen to it. So when you are talking to your guests, um, you'll be able to um, sound out how to pronounce it in Iceland. So I will be sending you that blog for your utilization. Um, some of you asked about the Ocean Diamond. So um, the Ocean Diamond is 199 passengers, again, with all outside cabins. And each cabin, um, except for the category A in the balcony suite, can be converted to twin beds. There's also the lowest category with a triple. Um, there's also a cabin category that has interconnecting cabins, just for your information. Um, someone asked if there uh, are any pre or post tours with the cruise. Um, of course. So for example, if you wanted to do our most popular cruise, the Iceland Circumnavigation, um, you can do a pre or post tour, which I highly recommend. Again, you can go to the Blue Lagoon or spend some time in some other areas um, that you didn't feel like you had enough time in. Um, Iceland Pro Cruises can do that for you, so you don't have to go through another company. We can handle pre, post, any sort of hotel nights, flights, um, anything that you need. You can do all of that with Iceland Pro Cruises. Um, some of you also asked, is there only one boat that we have? So we only have the Ocean Diamond, and she only sails from May to September. So those are Iceland's summer months and getting into the fall. So yes, we only have the uh, boat, the one ship, the Ocean Diamond, that sails to both Iceland and Greenland. Um, a lot of you wanted to know when the best time to travel was. Um, that's a that's a trick question because it depends on what you want to see. If you've got your pencils out, write this down. Uh, pertaining to Iceland Pro Cruises, again, we sail from May to September. May, June, and July, you're going to get the midnight sun, which leaves more time for excursions, uh, more daylight. Um, the puffins are um, on, the con uh, on Iceland. Um, so you just get more daylight, and then you get to experience the midnight sun. Um, if you would like to experience the northern lights, those pop out more towards the fall. So we've actually had sightings at the end of August, believe it or not, in, in reference to Iceland Pro Cruises. Um, so our August and September departures are more for our northern lights goers. Now, as a destination, um, Iceland, if you are interested in seeing um, 
Iceland during winter time, of course, we can arrange that. That would not be through the cruise. It's not very pleasant to sail during the winter. Um, but Iceland Pro Cruise's sister, part, uh, sister company, Iceland Pro Travel, does year-round Iceland. So if you'd like a better chance at seeing the northern lights in the winter, um, that's going to be more from um, November to March-ish. Um, this was a great question and made me chuckle. So, of course, Iceland is named Iceland and Greenland is named Greenland. Iceland is green and Greenland is ice. So it said that um, many years ago when the Viking, Eric the Red, discovered Iceland, he didn't want anyone to um, discover the island and he wanted it all to himself, so he named it Iceland and um, had also voyaged over to Greenland, which he saw was ice. So he flip-flopped the names and deterred many, many explorers um, from visiting the island. So you can um, read up on the history of Eric the Red. Um, a, a great question. The Ocean Diamond is a soft adventure boat. Um, so we are not a true expedition ship. We're more of a four-star boat. Um, so it's really great for people that would like to utilize us as a floating hotel and really customize what you'd like to do in um, the port. Now, the whole ship has been renovated from top to bottom, from all the cabins to the common areas to the um, bar, lounge. It's all been renovated, so it's a very, very comfortable um, ship. Um, let's see. Oh, I have someone wanting my contact information. That'll be a great slide to end on. So let me get my contact information up quickly. So... There it is, um, jessie at emergingdestinations.com. Um, again, reach out to me with any questions that you might have. Um, I'll just take one more question. Um, and if I didn't get to your question, don't worry. Um, I will be uh, replying to you um, personally. Let's see. Um, Okay, what, what months does the cruise operate? I, I mentioned May to, May to September, but of course you can book through us and book year-round Iceland. Um, and I think if you joined late, you did hear that um, Enrique mentioned that unfortunately we had to cancel um, our 2020 season. Um, so we're very much looking forward to 2021. You can book through info at icelandprocruises.com. Don't worry, I'll be sending you all of this information. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thanks so much for taking the 30 minutes out of your day. Again, if I didn't answer your question, I will reply to you directly. Um, you will be receiving a uh, playback of this webinar. And before you um, take a break for the day, head over to emergingdestinations.com under our webinar tab. Please sign up for our future webinars that include everything from uh, Patagonia to East Africa. We, our next series coming up uh, in Tanzania. Um, so, so head over. We have some really great webinars for you to join. But thanks so much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed learning about Iceland. If you'd like to dive deeper, please reach out to me. I am happy to focus on um, any part of Iceland that you'd like. Um, have a great rest of your day, and thanks again.